हेलो फ्रेंड्स दिस इज डॉक्टर किशोर भानुशाली फ्रॉम कर्नावती यूनिवर्सिटी गांधीनगर एंड आई एम हियर टू टॉक अबाउट अ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट टॉपिक ह्यूमन डेवलपमेंट इंडेक्स मैनी फ्यू माइट हैव हर्ड ऑफ ह्यूमन डेवलपमेंट रिपोर्ट प्रिपेयर बाय यू एन डी पी यूनाइटेड नेशंस डेवलपमेंट प्रोग्राम विल बी गोइंग वन स्टेप अहेड इन टर्म्स ऑफ अंडरस्टैंडिंग वेर डू इंडिया स्टैंड इन global picture do you have before i begin i would like to take this opportunity to thank ugc human resource development center professor jagdish joshi and his entire team and also this refresher course coordinator dr mumta brambat for giving me this opportunity to share my views on this important topic my association with gujarat university is very old i did my phd from gujarat university way back in 2008 from school of social science under the guideship of uh, then director professor bharat vachi since then i know the activities of ugc human resource development center and i'm associated with center as a resource person for their orientation program refresher programs and i'm happy to know that this center has been doing an excellent job in terms of organizing refresher course orientation course course for the phd program also there are modules for uh, online courses offering online courses and many more activities that center is doing so i'm happy to be associated with center moving ahead with this topic human development index where do we stand before moving on to human development index let's understand how this concept has evolved over a period of time human development index the first report of undp came in the year 1991 prior to that we had a concept called economic growth and when you say economic growth it focuses more on the production of economic goods and services and economic growth increases when your production increases so it is primarily a comparing the production of goods and services between two period so we have production for the last year production for the current year we compare and whatever production increase as report resulted it's called economic growth so in a way economic growth focuses more on increase in aggregate production you have both real measure or nominal measure we had economic growth at current price and also cost in price current price in captures also the effect of inflation whereas cost in price in economic growth is more of a proper and real growth we talk about there are various measures which are used for measuring economic growth most prominently and widely used measure is gdp gross domestic product but other than gdp we have ndp nnp gnp nnp fc and many such measures of economic growth most widely used across the world when you say economic growth it it all depends on the factors of production the contributing factors of production include your land labor capital entrepreneurship skill and again we also talk of technology so these are the input which helps you in increasing production and when production increases we say yes economic growth is taking place so primarily the focus of economic growth was on the availability and use of factors of production so the country with a higher gdp was considered to be better as compared to the country with a lower growth in gdp so that's what economic growth was meant for but over a period of time we realized that economic growth is not sufficient increase in production is not sufficient what is more important is 
how this production is distributed with increasing production if income inequalities are increasing the production is not equally distributed among the main power then it has no meaning at all from there the another concept of emerge and that concept is economic development this economic development was a broader concept much broader than economic growth and when you say economic development we are primarily talking about development of people well being of the people living standard of the people quality of the life of the people so economic development rather than focusing only on production try to capture people their development in terms of living standard quality of life so it was more of a transformation which involved quantitative as well as qualitative improvement so focusing more on a quality of life quality of the life of the people to what extent this quality of life has improved it focuses on freedom and choices capabilities and it also focuses on sustainable growth gdp growth your core economic growth may not be sustainable if it is not supported by economic development so for sustainable economic growth also you need economic development so we need growth along with economic growth we want poverty to come down we want more opportunity in terms of job we want people to have more choices we want people to have more freedom in terms of making choices of goods and services that are available to them we want living standard of the people to go up we want people to have better quality of life this all components are incorporated in economic development so that's what economic development is meant for and from there the concept of human development emerge so before we move on to human development i would like to show you a small clipping prepared by undp so let's see what undp has to tell about human development this is a promo video moving ahead with the presentations human development is defined as the process of enlarging people's freedom and opportunities and improving their well being so in a way it is focusing more on freedoms or opportunities of making a choices human development is all about real freedom ordinary people have to decide who to be what to be and how to live so people should have choices in terms of what they want to be who they want to be and how do they live so if these choices are not available economic growth alone has no meaning at all the concept of human development was developed by an economist mabubul haq dr haq argued that existing measure of human progress fail to account for the true purpose of development and the true purpose of development is to improve lives of the people in particular dr huck believed that commonly used measure of gross domestic product we call it gdp actually fail to adequately measure the well being so gdp is not measuring the well being of the people in an adequate sense this where we need some better measurement so undp has prepared this human development index and hdi was created 
to emphasize that people and their capabilities should be the ultimate criteria for accessing the development of the countries not economic growth alone it means economic growth cannot be the only criteria there should be emphasis on people capabilities of the people so what happens to the capabilities of the key people should be the ultimate criteria for accessing the development which cannot be judged just by economic growth so we have human development index and this human development index is a summary measure of average achievement i am repeating summary measure of average achievement in three key dimension and these three important key dimensions are long and healthy life being knowledgeable and achieving a decent standard of living let's focus is on the dimension again key three dimensions long and healthy life everybody needs it economic growth have no meaning if people are not living long and healthy life second being knowledgeable it means educated if you are not knowledgeable if you are not educated you will not be able to make right kind of choices and third having a decent standard of living this decent standard of living means goods and services that are available to you for consumption according to your choices so these three dimensions are captured in human development index and we have just seen in that video as well and based on this three dimension hdi is developed and this hdi is a geometric mean of normalized indices of each of these three dimension so undp collects the data on each of these three dimensions and then geometric mean is computed after normalization of the data now how do they capture this dimension so health dimension is captured by life expectancy at birth on an average how many years an individual is expected to live at the time of birth that is life expectancy which captures health dimension for capturing education dimension UNDP has two measures maze mean years of schooling for adult who are age 25 and above so for all those people who are age 25 and above what is average years of schooling that they had and for those school entering age how many expected years of schooling that we are talking about so expected years of schooling for a children of school entering age and means your mean years of schooling for adult age 25 and more these two important components are added as education dimension for capturing the standard of living the undp report or index captures per capita gross national income so national income per capita income so when per capita income goes up we expect that people to have better standard of living this is how three three dimensions are captured under human development index and again this is an image we have just seen the video these three dimension so long and healthy life knowledge and decent standard of living and for each of these dimension we have an indicators so life expectancy at birth for long and healthy lifetime in uh, dimension expected years of schooling and mean years of schooling as an indicator of knowledge dimension and gross national income per capita and they since it has to be global comparison undp uses purchasing power parity index so ppp in terms of dollar so gn gni per capita is indicator of decent standard of living and based on this undp prepared dimension index so life expectancy index education index and gni index and based on three indices final human development index is prepared 
Now, when you say human development report, the first human development report was released by UNDP in the year 1990, and major contribution by Dr. Mehboobul Haq and Nobel laureate Professor Martha Singh. And according to this human development report, human development or a human development approach is about expanding richness of human life. rather than simply richness of the economy in which human being lives to make it this bit simple the when you say economy is growing economic growth is there it means economy is becoming more and more rich this is richness of the economy hdi focuses on richness of human life it means people living in that country should have rich life so we need rich economy for rich life of the people but rich economy is not the only parameters for richness of the human being we need more dimensions like education and health as well so it is an approach that focuses on people and their opportunities and choices so it has been made very clear under human development report that it is fo- it focuses on people their opportunities and choices that's what human development report does and what this concepts are so again contents are taken from human development report when people it said human development focuses on improving the lives of the people that they live rather than assuming that economic growth will automatically will create well-being of the people so we had an economics concept called percolation principle so we cannot assume that economic growth automatically will percolate down to improve the lives of the people growth is seen economic growth is seen as a means to development rather than end in itself so economic growth is not end in itself economic growth is a means which ultimately leads to development and this development of whom development of people not of the nation not of the country when it comes to opportunities human development is about giving people a freedom to live the life they value everybody should have the more freedom of living that their life that they value life that they want to live okay in effect it means developing the capabilities and abilities of the people giving them a chance to use them so you need to develop a capabilities among the people to give them a chance to use them so choices are opportunities are available but then people should be able enough to use these opportunities for that they should have a choices so human development fundamentally is about more choices it provides a people with an opportunity we, we, it is not about insisting that they use them but is about providing an opportunities and making them capable to use those opportunities no one can guarantee human happiness and choices people make are their own concern so people are making their own choices we should make them capable to make their choices we should provide them enough opportunities so that they can improve their lives they can live the life that they value so these are important principle of human development and these principles are based for human development report and this is human development report the last human development report was released by united nations development program for the year 21 22 and this is a cover page let me show you the entire report as well so those interested in can look into a uh, united nations website and united nations report undp report is available in both the format one they have uploaded a 44 page 
a small overview of the report so if you don't want to get into the entire reading of the human development report i request you to go through this 44 page review of and the title of this report is uncertain time uncertain lives shaping our future in a transforming world because this report was prepared in the midst of covid crisis so it is what trying to capture more of an uncertain times so that was a title that they given and the entire report is also available on undp website which is around 320 page document and it captures lot of things there are good number of articles there are specific ideas given there and lot of information is available so those interested in can go through undp report available in public domain free on undp website going back to our presentations again so this is the cover page of the undp report and if you look at the global scenario this is an image that are taken from the report and the intention of taking this is to give you a specific idea about two recent crises so we had a global financial crisis in 2008 and the recent covid-19 pandemic how this crisis has affected world human development index in terms of value so since 1991 hdi reports are available and if you look at this entire progress the human development index shows a continuous improvement continuous improvement till 1990 pandemic and even if you look at this year 2008 financial crisis financial crisis have not adversely affected human development so even in this crisis period even in this crisis period human development continued because those were formerly a financial crisis and those financial crises have not adversely affected human development so the journey of growing human development continued post -cri financial crisis as well but during because of pandemic human development index for the world have adversely impacted so this blue line dotted line indicate the projected rate which are supposed to grow but actual the number line says that it has declined so this is what impact a covid-19 pandemic has on human development so this is what human development has impacted the world at large moving ahead this is uh, index and comparison of top 10 and top bottom 10 countries so the report for the year 2021 has total 191 countries and there are countries who have excellent human development component whereas there are countries which are lagging behind so if we talk in terms of the master report switzerland tops in the list with a human development index of 0.962 top in the rank hdi in terms of last year hdi 2020 switzerland was on third number and for the current year 2021 switzerland top in the list so highest level of human development in switzerland followed by norway norway was at the top in the year 2020 and now second number similarly iceland hong kong australia denmark sweden ireland germany and netherlands these are top countries in terms of human development index and if we compare the independent component say life expectancy at birth these top countries have life expectancy of the birth around 80 plus okay 80 plus 
Switzerland has 84 years. So on an average, at the time of birth, individual is expected to live for 84 years. So this is life expectancy of those top 10 countries. If you talk about expected years of schooling, again, it is in the range of 16 to around 21. So very high expected years of schooling for those nations. Mean years of schooling again in this top 10 nations ranges from 11 to highest somewhere around 13 point or 14.1. Per capita income 66,000, 64,000. So these are the countries where per capita income is also high. So these are the countries which are having high life expectancy at the birth. In education also they are performing better. And in terms of living standard measured by per capita income, they are doing fantastically. That's why these countries are on the top of the list in terms of Human Development Index. Vis-a-vis -vis this top 10 countries, if you look at the bottom 10, bottom 10, South Sudan, Chad, Niger, Central African Republic, Burundi, Mali, Mozambique, Burkina Faso and Yemen. Now here, the HDI index is very low. The lowest one for South Sudan is 0.385. Okay, so very low HDI. In terms of life expectancy at birth, if we compare the top 10 and bottom 10, we can see huge difference. Here life expectancy of the birth is around 60, below 60. Similarly, expected years of schooling is very low. Ranges from 5 years, 5 and a half to around 10.7. So very low expected years of schooling similarly very low mean years of schooling and also in per capita income is very low lowest per capita income has been measured in at 732 dollar dollar for burani followed by maybe how much 768 dollar for south sudan and vis-a-vis -vis, if you compare this with top 10 we can see huge difference 50,000 plus and then less than 2,000 practically except uh, this Burkina 2,000 all are again again this Mali for 2,000 all have even varies around less than 1,500 dollars huge difference here this is what human development index of top 10 bottom countries which gives you a global picture if we talk about india where do we stand it's very important for us to know where india stand so let me take you to the entire human development raw data now this is a data available from undp website and just to zoom in up where do India stand? So I'm putting control F and trying to find out India. This is where do we need. So India stands at rank 132 in human development in the uh, index. So out of 192 countries, we are at 132 and our index value is 0.633. Life expectancy at birth in India is around 67.2 years. Expected years of schooling is around 11.7. Mean years of schooling is 6.7. And per capita income, again to emphasize it is purchasing power parity based. It is 6590. Much lower than what it's supposed to be. But still, We'll be coming to the database that we have done reasonably good in terms of our performance over a period of time in the same database let's find out where do 
our competitors we always compare ourselves with china because human development is always about people and in terms of populations we are the one who are comparing so let's find out where china is and this is what a china is china is at 79th number with an index of 0.769 life expectancy at birth is 78 much higher than what we have in india expected years of schooling 14.2 mean years of schooling 7.6 and per capita income in terms of purchasing power is 17000 we india are at around 6500 so if we compare india and china china is much much ahead then what we are let's see one more country sri lanka so this sri lanka 73 much ahead than india in terms of index sri lanka is again if you compare sri lanka and china sri lanka is doing better than even a china Maybe a uh, small countries, but our neighboring one. Expected year of life expectancy seventy six. Expected years of schooling fourteen point one. Mean years of schooling ten, and GNI per capita around twelve thousand. This is what Sri Lanka is doing, and we always try to find out where Pakistan is. So here is a Pakistan. Highlight it, 161. So Pakistan is among low human development group, where India is among the middle human development index. Pakistan is at 161 with an index of 0.544. Life expectancy 66. Expected years of schooling 8.7. Mean years of schooling 4.5, and per capita income 4. Sorry, four thousand six hundred twenty-four dollar. This is what world picture is, and this entire data are available on the website. If you need this information, if you need this data file, feel free. Just drop in a mail to me, and I'll mail you the data file. Back to our own report. Yeah, this is what. Uh, Indian scenario from 1991 to 21 is typo error. It is 2021. This yellow line indicates the index. So over a period of time, if you look at this yellow line, human development index of India has been improving, and there is slight decline during this year because of pandemic. So over a period of time, index has improved. but when we compare the rank india was 116 215 from there so it was it was a reasonable good we our performance in terms of global comparison was not so good we reached to around 137 138 rank and then improved a bit reached to 127 so in 2016 India's ranking, Human Development Index was 127. Since then, our performance has slightly deteriorated. Okay, so from 27, 127, today we are at 132. So this is the time where we need to look in terms of what are we doing in terms of human development. This change could have been due cause because of multiple factors. including number of countries which are included in index but if we focus on a global picture and look at this since 2016 is time for us to do an introspection to find out where do we stand in terms of value index uh, human development index value it was 0.434 in the year 1990 and Gradually, it has been improving. 
and we reached to a stage where the index value was more or less stable at 0.645 in the year 18 and 19 but then recently it has declined so this recent decline can be attributed to covid pandemic and it is not in the case of india as a global scenario this is an important indicator where we are trying to find out gender differences and we always talks in terms of gender parity gender equalities so this three different color line the middle one white one indicates human development index in general for entirely india for 1991 to 2021 whereas the yellow line indicates hdi for male and blue line indicates hdi for female so if you compare these three there is has been a difference between male and female human development report index for female has been much lower than that of male and that trend continues since 1991 and recently if you look at there is slight reduction in the gap which is again noticed by UNDP as well so we can say that slightly we have reduced the gap between male and female in terms of human development but still there is huge difference in terms of hdi male is above the national average whereas female is much below the national average this is an indication of the fact that it's time for the government to take an appropriate action within individual parameters life expectancy at birth one of the parameters it was around 58.65 so life expectancy at birth was 58.65 in the year 1990 and then over a period of time it has improved and today we are around 70 uh this decline is because of can be attributed to pandemic uh so on an average life expectancy at birth is around 70.15 years so from 58 we have reached to 70 so we can consider this as a bit of progress but still when comes to global average still there is lot of scope for work for the improvement expected years of schooling if you look at this initial year okay from 1991 to nearly 2003 it was more or less flat after 2003 government took an initiative of focusing more on education and because of that expected years of schooling has improved which can be visible here but this trend was up to the year 17 after that we it has there has been a slight decline okay and more or less things have not improved so again this is a cause of concern for all of us for some action to be taken to increase this expected years of schooling if we want india's hdi rank to improve in terms of mean years of schooling there has been a marked progress since 1991 from 2.78 years today we are at, at around 606 6.66 years so mean years of schooling has improved a lot since 1991 but still when you compare with our neighbor pakistan sri lanka when you compare the global average still lot of scope for improvement when you say per capita gni in the year 1991 it was 1790 dollar improved and major improvement can be seen after the year 2009 it has been a steep increase in per capita national income and we reached to around 6650 dollar per capita gni but again because of pandemic it declined a bit 
but again shows post pandemic a slight improvement so we expect that this trend will continue but it is important to note that though we have seen a remarkable progress in per capita gross national income our gni per capita is much lower when we compare ourselves with china sri lanka and other neighboring countries so it is important for us to compare the per capita gni with our neighboring countries and take corrective measures looking at this indian scenario this is a quote that i have taken from hdi report 2021 which is worth mentioning human development report shows that progress globally has inverse so it is very clearly mentioned by human development report itself that the progress in global has reverse so the entire world is showing the negative result so india is not an exception so whatever decline in human development is india is facing it is a, a reflection of the global picture and specifically the impact of pandemic india see declining human development is a mirror that tend impacted by intersecting crisis so india is again a mirror image of the global picture because of crisis but there is a good news again this is a quote from undp report 2021 compared to 2019 the impact of inequalities on human development is lower so human development report mention that inequalities gender inequalities are reducing this is a good sign good news for india india is bridging human development gap between men and women faster than the world so world at large the trend is observed in terms of reducing the gap between human development male on female but compared to global average india is doing reasonably good and this development has come at the smaller cost of environment in terms of environmental impact of environment so we are protecting our environment and we are still developing india's growth story reflect country's investment in inclusive growth so this inclusive growth for india is reflected in india's progress social protection gender responsive policies and push towards renewables to ensure no one is left behind so indian government has actively be working towards investment to in inclusive growth social protection gender development renewable energy part of it and we always focus on involving everybody into the growth process so these are the quotation from a uh, president representative of undp in india that's a good sign for india as well this report recommend implementing policies that focuses on three investment this is important for our policy making three i investment investment in renewable energy so that we are prepared for pandemic so that is insurance for social protection so first i is investment in renewable energy second i is insurance that is preparedness for pandemic and to prepare our societies for ups and downs of an uncertain world so the insurance is to protect the people for this ups and downs and third i innovation in its many form technological innovations economic innovation and also cultural innovations which can build the capabilities of the people and make them capable to respond the challenges that they may come in the future so undp report focused on three i's for india investment insurance and innovations this is all from my side i hope you have enjoyed this my email id is kishorkishu@gmail.com and you can reach out to me 
with your feedback queries or any suggestion on this thank you thanks once again thank you